All right, ready, Bob? I didn't even get it. Yeah. All right, start at five. Ready? Five. Four. Three. three. Welcome back to the Burley Fishing Podcast. I'm Jeff Burlingame here with my co-host Paul Glass, and we've got two awesome dudes on the podcast today from Rabbit Baits, Bobby and Josh. How are you guys doing? Doing good, doing good. How are you doing? Where are you guys located? So we're in Michigan. Where are you guys at? So I'm in North Carolina. Okay, and, and Bobby, where I'm are you? I'm all at? the way up here in Vermont. In Vermont. Yeah. All right. So home, home of the the beast in the east. Killington? <laughs> yeah. Pretty close to Killington. I'm about halfway in between Killington and Lake Champlain. So There you go. Not bad. Awesome. awesome. All right. So these guys are here with Rabid Baits, and we're going to talk all about these fantastic plastic that, uh, that these guys are putting out uh, and all sorts of cool stuff that they're doing with that. We've got you know, anything from craw baits to drop shot rigging baits to shaky head worms, all sorts of stuff we'll talk about on the episode. And we're going to grill them. We're going to give them questions. We're going to have a good time. We will maybe throw them a curveball. Maybe not. I don't know. I told them we wouldn't. But now I'm going to now that we're recording, I'm going to say we are. Uh, but anyways, if you guys like the episode, be sure to subscribe. Drop us a five star review. Drop us a comment. Let us know what we can do to improve this show or let us know future topics that you'd like to hear us cover or talk about, and we will definitely try to work them in here. Uh, other than that, you can find us on Instagram at Burley Fishing, Facebook, Burley Fishing, and the YouTube channel, Burley Fishing, where it all started. Other than that, Paul, let's take it away, man. All right. So as always, we like to start with a nice, easy roller, something, a question you can't get wrong is the way I like to look at it, <laughs> even though I personally will judge you if you get it wrong. But like, you know, I was like, <laughs> I, think you, I think you can. You can definitely get it wrong. But like the previous on the, 15 episodes, you can get it wrong face, every time. <laughs> on its face, there's no wrong answer. So episode question, uh, if you get if you get to if you're Lord of the Universe and you get to pick who gets, you know, you're, you're fishing with a, a bunch of people or, or a partner or whatever, and you get to pick um, who gets the biggest, best fish of the day, but it can't be you. It cannot be you. Who who are you who are you selecting that's gonna gonna reel that fish in? Is it gonna be your wife, your kids, your best buddy? Is it gonna be like your imaginary best friend and then you're taking credit? What's the where are we going with it here? So just in general, what are we doing? A tournament scenario? Is it just regular fun day of fishing out on the lake? Regular fun day of fishing. But if you want to make it high stakes and you're going to straight up be like, well, if I want to play second fiddle to somebody, it's going to be uh, fill in the blank. Uh, Basically, I would think of it like this. Who would you not be pissed to see catch a giant fish? Because yeah, there are yeah, people... <laughs> For sake of this, I'm going to say it's going to be Josh because I kind of feel bad for him. You know, he's stuck down in North Carolina <laughs> and he feels all of our customer service like issues, <laughs> multimedia, everything down there. So I feel bad for him handling all that stuff down in the heat. So I, I'll have to let him take a fish, especially when he, he comes up here. It's a little bit he cooler. deserves it. <laughs> he deserves it. That's, that's Boy, legit. I'm Put in your hours. Fish. Get the big Boy. fish. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, originally I was kind of thinking my wife, but it sounds like in this scenario, I don't get to catch the big fish, so then I would have nothing but to hear about her catching the big fish. So I think my buddy Bob would be much less likely to rub in the fact that I got skunked or was catching dinks all day, you know? So it sounds like you guys aren't really that good of friends, because I can tell you right now, <laughs> if <laughs> I would not pick Jeff. There's no way, because then I would not be able to deal with that. I mean, the alternative, nope. right, is the guy in the next boat or something like that. Is that count? Is that a good answer? <laughs> Absolutely. I might pick that guy. We we would rather we would rather we both get skunked than the other one catches a fish. <laughs> Guaranteed. If but you watch I, any, I, any I video you, Josh, with us uh, going out. <laughs> We were practicing for a Costa event, and Josh came up from North Carolina. It was on Champlain. He's like, I need to catch one fish. I'm like, all right, let me take you to my juice really quick. First cast, he catch like a five-and-a-half pounder. I'm like, you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> that is so rude, man. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. It's a good picture, too. I got that Seth Spider mustache going on like you got in that picture. I had a mullet then, too. That's oh. a primo picture. I should show you the picture. It's good. Yeah, I'll be <laughs> You have my email. I'll be waiting. <laughs> Is that that's like on the main website page for Rabbit Baits, right? It that's should just, be. It 
Jeez. homepage. This, this yeah. is us. Now that I'm thinking about it, I feel like if you're the multimedia guy, you gotta know that that's just gonna sell bait. Like, I mean, obviously, <laughs> just own it, man. My um, favorite picture. So, <laughs> Jeff, who are you picking then? Uh, well, yeah, obviously not you, because every time you catch fish and I don't, I get pissed off. So that's see, that's the way I thought about this question is like, who would you not be pissed <laughs> to see catch a fish if you're not catching? And it's like when he and I go out, like. One of us is having a bad time or we're both having a good time. Like if both of us don't catch fish, we still have a good time. But if one of us catches fish and the other one's just like throwing lures in the water and nothing's <laughs> happening, which is me usually, then I'm pissed. <laughs> so or we're both catching fish and we're both happy. Like, you know, there's there's lots of ways to have a good time. Uh so for me, like I just took my wife out fishing and she like hammered it and caught like her biggest bass ever. And it was just, just so exciting. Like just the raw sort of emotion and joy and slash fear and everything, all these emotions that she was eliciting were so hilarious. And like, I got more pumped than when I catch fish. Like I was just so excited for that. So I would actually say my wife, just because of, you know, the reaction that I know she'll have when it happens, like it's pure entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> Hard recommend that video. I watched it and I was laughing so hard and I know just like <laughs> it was crazy. I I thought about picking my wife initially and then I was like, no, because what's gonna ha what would happen in reality is like I would be in a kayak and I would be like, you know, fifty yards away from her and I would hear the splashing and the screaming and I'd be trying to fish and I know what that means. That means I have to stop what I'm doing. I have to Get go there. all the way back over there. <laughs> I have to unhook that thing. And I'm going to be like, here's your fish. Hold it. I'm taking a picture. And she'll be like, no. <laughs> so absolutely not. That's way too much work. I would totally pick my dad because I have no idea what that man would do if he like, if he like legit like got into like a 20 inch smallmouth or something. I have no idea what he, none. No, I could not tell you what he would do, but I promise it would be gold and I would never forget it. So yeah, I'm picking my dad. Dude, hard recommend pro tip. If you take your wife fishing and you're both in kayaks, what I did is I just tied her up to my kayak. <laughs> and like, <laughs> I, like I have the, the Hobie pro angler. So I just took us everywhere. I was the trolling motor and she just hung on. And next time I'm just going to bring her a book or a Kindle and I'm just be like, here, chill. And I'm just going to fish the whole time. <laughs> See, I could have told you that half the equation. That's what I do. I'm like, I got a stack of magazines like this big. I'm like, well, which one do you want to read now? <laughs> yeah. There you go. Here's another one. I'm busy. Yeah. That's a good idea. I have Jeez. a follow. I have a follow up question though to the Ooh. standard question of the week. We don't usually do this, but oh. I I was gonna put it in the. I was gonna try and weave it in, but I was like, no, 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 no. I need to know up front who I'm dealing with. So we have a. I need to start keeping a tally. To be honest with you, but we've had a lot of. We've had a lot of. We've had a number of guests. And so far, I'm I'm almost entirely alone in my answer here. Um, question is, are you are you a are you a catch them, keep them, and eat them, or are you typically a uh, let them go so they can grow? I guess it depends on what we're catching. Nope. Yeah, I'm a I'm a let them go <laughs> so they can grow unless we're catching like yellow perch or something like that, and then, then they go right in the frying pan. <laughs> yeah. Hey, all right, I'm. You're you're in my Closer. camp. I'm so much happier right now. I feel way better. Josh? Oh, absolutely. Yellow perch. Nice mess of like 50 of them. What Skinny about them isn't going to be fun, but. <laughs> Dude, but it's totally worth it. What about, okay, what about, I mean, walleye? Same same scenario, right? Mm, that's a bigger perch. You're keeping all that. That's, a that's, that's, a, that's a super perch. We're keeping that one. Yeah, absolutely. Here's where I'd probably draw the line. What about a pike? Mm -mm. it's a lot of work you got that y bone in there to fillet it all out all right we're not in the same camp i tried <laughs> i've done it before don't get me wrong i've eaten it but it's a it's a lot of work i love there's nothing like pulling <laughs> out like so a good <laughs> two foot fillet and you get like four of them like yeah no, that's yeah i'm keeping that i'm eating that <laughs> <laughs> i'm not all against right. it don't get me wrong don't get me wrong i've had it this is the closest thing I've had to a win yet, I think. So I'm taking this as a W. You guys are in my camp. Jeff, you're totally by yourself. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> See, I live in my camp though because I'm lazy. Like basically, <laughs> if I go if I go fishing with Paul, 
I'm like, hey, you got your Yeti. Also, do you have everything that you require to cook me this food? And let's keep them all, man. <laughs> and then, and then we we're just like shooting like fish into his Yeti in the back of his freaking kayak, and it's a good time. But if it's just me, yeah, I'm I'm never going to. <laughs> like, I just don't want to deal with it. Yeah, that's what I have to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, dinner, Paul, I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah. So the next. <laughs> The, uh, the next segment of the show is typically we do like a week in review. Um, I'll go first. Uh, this this entire week I have been doing lit. I have I've been doing literally nothing. I keep calling this basement 2020. I'm finishing up my basement. Uh, basement 2020 has led to garage 2020, and so I like did like a massive uh, structural reorg of my entire garage so that I could take all the things that would have gone in my basement and I can keep them in my garage. Uh, I also built a cart for my Hobie, which is brand new and 14 feet and a lot heavier than my previous kayak. So that needed that needed a whole setup. Dude, struck complete. My wife's car fits, in, fits inside of the garage with, there's like three shelves of decoys and it still <laughs> all fits in there. So modern, modern feet for sure. And that is my, that's it. I have no fishing, even though I really wanted to, because it's been like 85 and sunny every day, but I shut it all. I shut everything down, worked till like midnight every night, cranked it out. So now I can fish like every day. There you go. No, you can't. <laughs> Are you all next week? Is that what's yeah, going to happen? Exactly, yeah, like literally starting in four seconds, it's going to be <laughs> down go. for forever. <laughs> wow. That's fantastic, man. I'm happy you finally got that part done. How far is your basement, though? Uh, I'm like 90 plus percent. If if it weren't for like the COVID shutting down factories, because like the factory that makes all of like the doors like in the United States wasn't shut down, like I'd be done. I'd ha- I'd be up there with a nail gun, just like, and I'd be done. But no, we're still waiting on doors. I got like two more weeks, but I don't have to do anything for like two weeks and nothing. I'm just sitting here waiting. I mean, that's solid. <laughs> uh so i've spent my week fishing because somehow i randomly had this week that i didn't even know was on like father's day weekend or whatever and like i this weekend i'm we're taking my uh my kids up to soaring eagle and in like mount pleasant michigan so we're going to like water park and it's like this big girl scout thing for my daughter which is gonna be a lot of fun for her so i'm like i'm gonna take father's day and i'm gonna just do the whole week and I'm just going to fish all week and wife, please don't complain when I go fishing. And she's been awesome about it. So, uh, I got out Tuesday, yesterday and today, and I put in about, I don't know, like six hours a day pretty much. And it has been 85 and sunny. So the sun's been kind of beating me down, but it was a good time. I mean, I got into some fish, um, caught some on the darter. Uh, so the first time I ever fished that actually, I don't fish drop shot rigs very often at all. So it's pretty cool. Uh, rigged it up to a drop shot and caught a couple decent bass on that. So that was sweet. Um, fish the river for a little bit. Our rivers are kind of garbage, but I got into a small mouth, at least one. <laughs> I was like, yay, they're here. And then I left. I'm going to lakes now. <laughs> like the, you, it's ter- the current's bad. Like it's chocolate milk clarity. It's just not, it's not a real fun time. You got to hit them right on the head. And like, it's hard to do when you're going that fast. So yeah. Yeah, ended up going to the lakes yesterday and today. Today was pretty fun, too, um, testing out some stuff from the Monster Bass Box uh, for this month and from Mystery Tackle Box, too, kind of comparing them head-to-head. There was some garbage in the Mystery Tackle Box, I'm just going to say. Some straight jank garbage, and I was getting so (laughs) mad because I was... I was fishing just out of the two boxes, uh, and, and, like, that's already kind of frustrating and hard, but then, like some of the baits were just straight garbage. And I straight up took the jig, the Z-Man jig I got out of my monster bass box. And I did the thing where you think you tie it on and then you throw it in the water, like tied to your rod. But I just threw the jig in the water because it wasn't tied on. (laughs) So I I think the sun was getting to me. I just went. (laughs) Then I I, like thought about what I did and I was like, oh, damn it. (laughs) Oh, no. So we have to throw in the water too. I know, right? (laughs) So we had, we have one of those days. I don't know though. That, that was the Z-Man uh, cross-sized football head jig. And the brush guard on that, to be honest, is complete garbage. 
like I touched it and it broke. And then I super glued it in. Yeah, it's like a plastic, it's the Y shape one to yeah. go over the hook. And it's plastic and it just popped out. I was like, all right. So I'm not mad that I threw it in the water because it was kind of <laughs> tank and broke already. <laughs> but yeah. We checked that video. Jeff's just like, oh no. Fucks <laughs> 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 it. I mean, uh, I don't know, <laughs> but uh, but it was cool, man. It was a cool couple of days, and I was happy that I got to fish like some of the the rabbit baits, plastics, which I have a whole bunch right here because these are I have pulse because <laughs> we're splitting the box you guys sent us. Um, I fished a heck ton of mine and, and already broke off a bunch, but uh, you know we got into some fish with them, and that was cool. And I think it was like it was really good and appropriate, like approaching this podcast. So I feel prepared because I've fished with your baits now. Quite a bit since uh, you had a you had a shaker worm in would have been like February's box March's box in Monster Bass oh, December's box December even yeah. further back. yeah so I had like the orange uh, I, I called it Beaker from Muppets because the, <laughs> the hair on the head looks like friggin' Beaker so <laughs> so I have I have one of those. And then, uh, and then we had the, the monster bass red, uh, cross in the, in like last month's box, I think. Right. Um, yeah. fish the heck out of that too. Caught, I've caught a bunch of those on uh, a bunch of bass with those on a Ned and it's fantastic. And then I saw you guys posted the, the shaker worm cut in half on the Ned too. rig that up today, fished a little bit, didn't get bit, but I mean, still, I was like middle of the day, super hot. I was just casting under docks and stuff and, you know, rock bass, basically just getting nibbled all day. Rock bass, bluegills, <laughs> big old bluegill spawn right now. All we got is like tiny little scrappy bluegills everywhere trying to eat my stuff. They try to eat that wiggle bomb that came in the monster bass box. The 11 inch? No, not the 11 inch worm. I, I did throw that today too. Didn't get anything. But uh, through that wiggle bomb, which is the, it's like the, um, it's like a sinking frog basically. Oh, the chase. Yeah. About it. It's the chase baits. Everything was on that thing. Like people, the, every single fish in the water was just following it. Nothing bit it. <laughs> Not one bass. I, no. I love how Jeff is out here blaming these baits. I, <laughs> <laughs> this is just, <laughs> these dang baits, man. <laughs> They're terrible. No, man. Did you see that? Uh, well, you, I don't think you don't get MTB, do you? No. Paul. Why would I do that? <laughs> I, just make it um, I do it because I compare them on the channel and it's like the thing that gets me the most views and, and uh, that monetization. But um, <laughs> they have this Livingston lipless, which is this thing and it chirps. And I was like, this is either going to be a gimmicky piece of trash or it's going to catch all the fish. The fish ran away from it. Every <laughs> fish. I was like, this thing's gimmicky trash, like I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I got a sideways swimming square bill that does nothing that I want it to, and then I had that thing that scared all the fish away. So I was glad I had some rabid baits to throw, and uh, this month's Monster Bass had a bunch of, like, um, I don't know, X-Zone and Spinnerbait. Spinnerbait caught me some fish today, too. So, so yeah, we got, anyways, so I we got to know. <laughs> What's been going on with rabbit baits this week? Because I think you guys did a giveaway that ended this week. A pretty yeah, big. Yeah, one, right? yeah. It was a it was a good one uh, for Father's Day weekend. So we ran it the weekend before, and the idea that uh, what is it, Sammy Bass Slayer could get his baits That's... for Father's Day weekend, right? So good shout out. I think he got it. I think he either got it today or he'll get it tomorrow, so he could use it for the weekend. Um, it's awesome. a good, good giveaway. A lot of baits, um, some merch. Uh, we do have another one coming up in July, so if anybody's interested, I think it's going to be even yeah. better. Uh, Fourth of July. Um, we might even do a little. I haven't talked to Bob about this, but I'd really like to do kind of a limited edition red, white, and blue color to get something in there. Only yeah. for the giveaway, though, not for sale. Can I, <laughs> yeah. huh? Can I enter now? Yeah. Can I enter now? Yeah. That's just to set the stage. We're talking about like when you take the picture, like you have to stand way back because there's so much stuff that it's yeah. like you're yeah. talking about like the full screen giveaway, not like the oh let me let me get my get yeah there's this no no yeah. no 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 Absolutely. Like, you're, you're, like you're trying to squish it all together. There's so much crap on the screen. I love it. 
Yeah, we're talking 20 plus packs of worms, 20 packs plus of crayfish, uh, some a shirt, a hat, you know, something you could spend some good time. I think we'll try to throw in some some hooks so you got everything you need to uh, tie rabbit baits on and, and go out for the weekend. Nice. Oh, man. All right. Now we get to the filet of the episode, the what we like to call the show meat. So um, the first question that I have, I got to hear more about the Fox logo. This is like a, I'm like a nerdy, like every time I see like a, a company or something, I literally like sit and I wonder like, how did this happen? Like some of them are kind of obvious, like, ooh, you know, siren, it's a, it's a bass. Oh my God, no way. Like, you know, <laughs> obviously, but like we got rabid baits and then there's this uh, very like aggressive looking Fox. I need to know, I need to know the backstory. <laughs> well, so our baits are made with rabbit hair, right? Um, that's a long story about how we actually came up with using rabbit hair. But we're, I don't know, we're come, trying to figure out a name after we came up with the fact that we're going to use rabbit hair. So we're calling it like rabbit baits and rabbit this. And then all of a sudden one day we just said rabbit baits. We're like, oh, that sounds a whole lot better than rabbit bait. <laughs> so, nice. Like, then we had the name rabbit baits. And uh, my cousin's actually a graphic designer. So... He was helping us out, and he gave us a few logos, and he's actually the one that came up with that fox. And we looked at that one, and we're like, rabbit baits, fox, yep, it's going to happen. <laughs> Dude, I love it. I love the, the red eyes and then the pointy tail. Dude, that's that's where it's at. I love that. So then I got I to gotta ask this. Um, what makes you be like every, – everyone has we, – I read the website – we all know that like you got a unique so just so people who if you haven't seen rabbit baits you don't know what it's all about walk us through what makes your finesse baits a little bit different than some of the other ones and then and then i got some more questions after you do that but that is important <laughs> kind of set the stage for folks whoever, this whole show whoever is, can. is questions man yes i know that's what i do first so, you have more questions <laughs> so just walk it walk us through what makes rabbit baits a little bit unique because and i'll say actually a lot of bit unique because they are totally different Well, uh, I think this one's pretty pretty obvious. We got we got hair. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, so you got the so soft plastic. Definitely and, the, the rabbit yeah. hair is uh, what sets us apart. So there it is. There it is, right there. And, and he uh, he is not shaking. It is just that <laughs> wacky. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I mean, even like Lake Champlain, where I'm at, we get a lot of current. Or up on the St. Lawrence River, there's a ton of current, and that just gives it so much action, especially when you're not moving it. And, like, those smallmouth get so finicky, especially when they're pressured. Mm -hmm. And if you just, like, dead stick that and that thing still moving while you're really not moving the bait at all, then, uh, you know, it just really catches a lot of pressured bass so much better than other baits. So you're talking about, I mean, this is basically when, like, people talk about, like, um, hair jigs. That's a big, like, kind of a Midwest Michigan type deal for sure. Um, yeah. You know, you're, you're, you're combining, like, the that awesome, like, marabou – type movement in the water that makes those so deadly it makes flies super super deadly and then you're adding that to like the ability to like put it on anything you can put a soft plastic on basically yeah yeah, yeah. so like up on the st lawrence river you know i catch i throw a hair jig all the time and we catch them up shallow on a hair jig and it's like how do you catch fish on a hair jig when you know they go down in 40 50 feet of water i mean you, you don't you're gonna drop shot or you just don't all right so. <laughs> now now you can <laughs> oh, i love it and it and it is something that like i've never seen anything like i will say though i've been i'm a i do a lot of not a lot i do some tie fly tying i've been doing a wacky worm just like that and dude tell me that doesn't look deadly it's called dill's pickle for those of you who can't see it this is basically like a double-edged sword here with marabou on both ends, and then you got like 30-pound tests woven in between, and you got your you got your you got your hook right there, dead center, dude. When I saw when I first saw the rabbit bait, I was like, somebody's already making this. I don't have to make <laughs> it myself. Are you freaking kidding me? Paul's awesome. million dollar idea of the episode. <laughs> all, yeah, all my million dollar <laughs> ideas. This one first. just so <laughs> happens to be taken. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously though, and now I'm glad you said. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned St. Lawrence because I was gonna, I'm gonna ask later about like all the naming conventions for all the baits. But 
So St. Lawrence River, that that was a big one. So what then my first question is, now that we kind of know a little bit about, uh, you know, folks who haven't seen rabbit baits or haven't heard them, you're making these awesome uh, soft plastics kind of meshing with uh, some of the hair that really gives it that that sweet action. What's what what made you guys say, like, this is something that I would want to have. I, there's a lot of things that I want to have, and I did not start a company to be like, I'm going to go make that stuff. <laughs> what um, what was like the switch that was like, dude, we're just going to do this? Like, it's time. It's time. I'm pulling the trigger. I need to start cooking these up. I mean, we had always been like tinkering around with like, you know, tying flies. My, my dad, uh, he's a partner too, and he worked at Orvis for a while. So he was uh, always tying flies and fly fishing. So he was tinkering around with putting the hair and plastic and whatnot and then uh, josh and i were up on the st lawrence river we were fishing a coast event in an aba uh so we were up there for i think we we're up there for like three or four weeks and i think there was also like a, it was like the fish were so pressured that week it was so hard to catch them and we we're like figuring out you know how do we catch these fish if they're so pressured and josh was like dead sticking a bait so we started putting the hair in it and you know that's where the goby was the first one that we came up with there and um you know we kind of built a little prototype that looks pretty similar to what we're making right now and uh we caught them pretty good those pressure fish and it was it was kind of an eye-opening experience right there and then it was like all right how do we how do we sell them from from here because you know some, some of our first prototypes were like all right we can now sell a four pack for about 173 dollars <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> deal <laughs> i love that the goby was the first one because i was going to ask where the goby came from i feel like you're, you're touching all the roots man i love that um being in so michigan one of the, one oh, of yeah. the reasons oh. why it makes it so kind of unique and works so well when you're dead sticking is because if you've ever seen a bait fish when it's just staying still it's always moving its pectoral fins or something especially in the st lawrence river because it's fighting current so when that current's moving across the fur it actually makes it look like it's a real bait fish and not just a plastic worm because it's got those fins and you know that's where it really separates it from other plastic and really helps you catch more fish and you spend a day out on the st lawrence on fish catching them with these that's kind of when you have your aha moment <laughs> so the light the light bulb goes off and you guys are like do we're gonna start cooking up plastics yeah i freaking love it so we talked a little bit about the goby before we go on because i have questions as we mentioned what are the what are, what's the whole lineup we got the the goby and then then fill in the blanks got the goby the darter the shaker worm and then the rabid craw it's a cross sweet so t- tell me about tell me about tell me about the darter because I think I think we'll we'll just assume that a lot of people know what a goby is but it's like a little like finger sized like half frog um, tapering off type like that's what a goby is but talk me through what's the what's the darter so the darter is um, kind of like an it started off as another uh, goby imitation. Um, so those were like our two original prototypes. So, and I use those, both of them. I got, if I'm smallmouth fishing, I'm on any of the Finger Lakes, Champlain, St. Lawrence River. I got my one, two punch is that uh, goby tied on a Carolina rig and the darter on a drop shot. Yeah, Rit, that, on a Carolina. That's a deadly little combination right there. Look at those yeah. eyes. Learn well, something so, today. <laughs> oh, I actually no, I did. So I've been, I've actually this oddly enough, I've been kicking myself for like the last like six months, less than six months, eh, maybe more, maybe like the last season and a half. We'll say that six months worth of season of not using a Carolina rig almost ever because I always go Texas because it's just easier. It's like two less knots, and I just feel like I'm gonna cut it off if it doesn't work anyway. So like I almost that's just you know a habit almost. But then, like, I'm in my brain, I'm always like, man, if I had a Carolina, though, I could, it'd be totally different. Like, I could work it in, like, a totally different way, especially when you're in the river. I'm like, it's a totally different beast. But then every time I go out, I'm like, ah, I'm just not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's cool to hear you say that, though, because I'm a drop shot fanatic um, a little bit. Uh, we get, um, I don't know if you guys know uh, Lake St. Clair, right, um, in between the Detroit River. A lot of people know it. 
Um, dude, a drop shot, because the depth never gets more than 20 feet, drop shot's murder out there. It's just murder. If you can if you can hold a spot and you can throw a drop shot, the freshwater drum, you can just murder them. Once you get the, the depth dialed in, it's over. I mean, like, it's it's over for them. Um, but again, I, I, I know I'm not the only one. Carolina gets overlooked a ton for Texas rig and drop shot gets overlooked a ton for stuff like the Ned rig where you don't have to tie a weight on. And like, I, yeah, that's why I'm like, what? Cause it's just with the finesse, you got to walk me through, you got to walk me through the <laughs> finessiness of it too, because I feel like that's what really does. That's what makes the, those two rigs work really well with those baits. So the darter that, that they were talking about, it's got like a, it's got a flat tail, right? Yeah, yeah, so the Tartar's got a flat tail, um, which really makes it such a good drop shot bait. You just twist that thing, and that tail moves, and the fur moves. The whole thing is, is moving, just looks like a, you know, a live little goby or, you know, perch or something down there. And, um, you know, if I if I see a fish on a graph, and I'm like, that one's going to eat, I pick up that dart, or I drop on them, and I catch them pretty quick. <laughs> it's, nice. it's, it's probably, I haven't fished them enough. I have not fished them enough. But like watching them move and you and it, for folks who are listening, you can watch the videos on like Instagram and I don't even know where else, but at least on Instagram, I know I've watched some of your guys' videos where you do them in the fish tank and you're, you're, you're dropping them. You like, don't even fish it. You throw it down and then you just wait for the fish to bite it. Cause like that movement that it has on its own, that little flat tail is connected by like next to nothing. And that thing is just wiggling around like crazy, like all on its own. In addition to the hair, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of action in that little little, little darter. Yeah, the like cool thing, yeah, the cool thing about that goby, like, so when I throw it on a Carolina rig, I, I, what I do is I might be a little bit different than most people. I'll throw it on like an ounce, ounce and a half, even like a two ounce weight, and then put a longer leader, like a 24 to a 36 inch leader. So that big weight, you know, it's, you're dragging that thing across the bottom, and it's kicking up dirt and rocks. And um, we'll use a, a floating plastic in the first floats as well. So on the Carolina rig, that goby's back there floating behind it, you know, probably eight to ten inches off bottom while that sinker's causing a big ruckus on bottom. Turn it up. It looks like that little goby's following whatever's down on bottom, picking up little bugs and whatnot, and then smallmouth come and investigate, and here's this goby following whatever this thing is on bottom, and they eat that goby. Dude. So, uh, it's just a crazy effective rig. I'm legit just going to tie them. I'm going to pre-tie like 10 Carolina rigs and just like they're going in, they're going in the boat. So that like, I won't screw this up <laughs> and I'm going to go invest in cinder blocks. I'm just going to take a big chip off of it. And I'm going to use that for my weight. <laughs> just a straight anvil on a Carolina rig. <laughs> I guarantee cool. you're going to have Carolina rigs in your boat, but you are not going to tie them. I'm calling you out right now. <laughs> if you don't throw a Carolina rig immediately upon reaching the next body of water that we fish, that's all you're allowed to throw. Take it. <laughs> now you're, you're attacking my pride. So now I'm, I'm not going to throw anything else. I, you're going to be I'm like, know, I know I'm, not, I'm bringing one rod and I'm just bringing like dangling hundreds of Carolina rigs. So deal with that. All with the um, <laughs> I love it. No, it's really cool. And that's a great tip though, because I think, um, the reason I kind of ask about like the the finessiness um, is you guys, I mean, like that shaker worm, the the craw, even the, if you look at the size of it and the way the appendages are attached, I mean, obviously the hair too, but, um, you know, everything about it is like, it's that like you're getting dialed in on that, on that finesse bite, right? I mean, that's kind of the, that's the, that's the deal right now for, for the baits that you guys are throwing out. And I think a lot of people, when they hear finesse, they think either just drop shot or they're thinking, at least just this may just be me, or they're thinking like Ned Rig these days, because it's kind of making a resurgence. The 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 finesse, um, kind of like there's like a wave of people like you know hammering away at the finesse, and it's kind of a it's kind of a new trend. Yeah, there's a lot you can do with the shaker worm and like a Texas rig too. When we were at the Potomac River for a week, uh, we were throwing a Texas rig with a really light weight, like a quarter ounce weight. And we wouldn't peg it. So when you would toss it in, you know, the weight would hit first and that worm would slowly fall down. Um, and, you know, that proved to be very successful in the middle of August in the Potomac when nobody was catching fish. We were on the boat catching fish 
practice them for the tournament. So you know, there's a lot of other ways to finesse other than, you know, just the standard drop shot. So what kind of hook were you using? Just a, a worm hook. Small one, though. Small one, like a three out. I love it. Because I had I carry like a crap ton of those because that's what I use on Lake St. Clair, like from shore. Cause it just I sometimes you don't even have to wait it. Mm-hmm. It just you just let it roll and it just murders. I love that. I don't think I, Jeff, how many how many small worm well, relatively small worm hooks do you even bring with you? Do I bring? I bring yeah. all of the tackle I've ever oh, owned that's right. in my life you have, you have every day. You own, that's right. So hundreds? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I I Give will say this. <laughs> like I rigged the I, I played with the shaker worm a lot today. So I, I like wacky rigged it. I went weighted and unweighted, and then I cut it in half, threw it on a Ned rig, threw that out there a bunch. I didn't Texas rig it. I should have done that. And apparently now Paul and I are going to Carolina rig a lot more. So <laughs> I'm gonna, I guess you can stay tuned for the the most flashy, amazing episode ever, where all we do is Carolina rig <laughs> for 30 minutes straight. <laughs> it's going to be great. Top views. Uh, but, but yeah, I, I mean, I that could have worked where I was. I mean, I, I think... Um, it's something I would like to get more comfortable with, you know, and that's lately, like what I've been trying to do is just do things that I don't normally do. Like I threw the Ned rig, my Ned rig, the copper true Z man Ned rig, which I throw all the time. I only threw it once today for about 10 minutes. Yep. I'd be proud. And I fished for like six hours. That's, that's like a record for me. <laughs> that that thing's awesome. like almost, I should have a rod just associated only with my, my little Z man setup. So I throw it so much and like, I just leave it rigged at all times. It just sits in the back of the boat, <laughs> but like <laughs> I'll, I'll go out to do whatever it is, you know, Paul and I are trying to do that day or whatever I'm trying to get done. If there's a challenge or whatever, and I'll fish the heck out of whatever baits I got. But once the kitchen sink is just dumped out in the cockpit of the boat, I'm just like, where's my Ned rig at? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> but I will say, like, the shaker worm looked really good rigged up that way, too. Um, so, I, I mean, I was excited about that. I'm going to throw that a bit more. I'll start on that, like, watermelon with that bright red hair. Like, that's a crazy color. I mean, they're all that pretty. watermelon is definitely, like, their best-selling worm. Mm-hmm. Dude, that is so good. That's why I wacky rigged that today. And I was, like, throwing it around the docks. And it looks good, wacky rigged. You wouldn't no, think. Cause it, I mean, it's, I'll... it's tapered like a, a shaky head worm. So, I was, like. This is going to be good. But I mean, I mean, I don't know. You throw a trick worm, stuff like that all the time too. So, but that hair, everything like your, your plastics move so crazy in the water that it's just like perfect for that wacky rig. It was awesome. I want to eat it. That's why it sells so good. <laughs> it's, it's fish food, not people food, Paul. You can't eat it. I already yeah, told like, you. Let's be honest. Time. Like how many times you look at a lure and you're like, Dude, I would totally eat that if I was fished. <laughs> and that's yeah. the one that I'm picking, right? <laughs> then, then you think about the last time that you bit off a plastic and you were like, oh, yeah, actually, those are gross. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I, I like, that again. <laughs> like, you can tear it with your hands and also you have a knife, but I'm always like, there's just little chunks in your mouth now. And you're just like, why did I do that? Why did I do that? <laughs> so. Don't eat your baits, people. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what I another thing, another I was kind of curious, like how how big, how big are like um, how many people are like working on rabbit baits or with rabbit baits right now? Is it like three or is it like thirty? Is it ten? Like what? Like what? What rate? Well, how many? How many folks are running the show right now? What, what's your payroll? What is your gross revenue that you bring in? <laughs> if you don't mind asking. Uh, <laughs> P.O. Box, all that important information. <laughs> yeah, so there's four people, one of which is on the payroll. Three of them are partners not taking any money. Uh, so that kind of answers your question The there. long game. Yeah. I no, got you. Uh, so small operations. Uh, we've got the, the shop where we make the baits are up in Vermont, which is you know, a pretty unique place for a bass fishing lure company. Um, but we're, we're making it happen. Um, I think it makes us a little more versatile because we're not just, you know, the summer bass in Alabama. We've got, you know, we understand smallmouth. We understand ice fishing. You know, we've got kind of a complete spectrum of fishing. Um, really resonate with the northern folks up there without ice fishing. <laughs> we, need need more, we need more companies. <laughs> we need more companies. I was companies drinking some like bush this. lights earlier, so I really connect. 
Uh, oh, <laughs> latte. <laughs> right, tell them. Uh, so then I live in North Carolina and um, the third partner, my wife, brought me down here. So I do a lot of pretty much all the administrative work, any management on the website, all the marketing, all the Facebook posts, every email, the I'd never realized how many people message people on Instagram or Facebook. And it's a lot. It's a lot of people that message companies on, on Instagram. Uh, so I'm constantly responding, checking, you know, new messages, this person, that person, um, trying to do some fish tank stuff. Uh, we're working on building out our YouTube page now uh, so that people can see them. We have one really good video there now, but uh, you know, hopefully as we prepare for iCast and get kind of our library of content out, you'll be able to go to our YouTube channel and see the different ways to rig it and how it looks. Uh, my you know, fish tank has the pump on it and I try to simulate some form of current so that you can see what it looks like if you weren't moving it, et cetera. So that's kind of the, the team. And so, the then, so then Bobby, you're up there, you're up there with the ovens and the chemicals getting a little buzz. Oh, yeah. I see all the cancerous <laughs> materials behind you right there. <laughs> tell, tell us more. <laughs> yeah, so I'm up here in our, uh, our shop. No, uh, no basement cooking for us. So um, <laughs> it was how long ago? Maybe three or four months ago that we actually got a injection molding machine. So uh, no cancerous fumes for us anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anymore. <laughs> Hopefully we're good. No, but uh, we did start in the basement, I think just like any other company making worms, but uh, we got a shop. We moved into this shop back in uh, October uh, last year. So uh, we've been rocking and rolling here for oh, six months and using our injection molding machine, which uh, Josh and I went down to uh, Zorn Mold down in Alabama. We spent a week down there working on the machine, getting it all ready, making sure it fit right because I don't know if you've noticed, but our baits are a little bit different. So, so are our molds. You can't <laughs> store them by a mold. So, you know, we got to design all our own molds, cut our own, all our own molds so we can fit the fur in it. And then we can't just go out and get any old injection molding machine because our molds are so different. So we have to go down and custom build an injection molding machine to shoot our bait. So it's a, it was quite the process, but uh, we're, we're definitely getting there now. Hey, so like, completely, completely that different up. setup. Perfect with the classic as well. So oh, we were yeah. able to go to the Bassmaster classic, see what that was about. <laughs> Smart. Yeah. Just casual that's what trip. happens when the administrative guy kind of eyes things out. You know, that's <laughs> yeah. what you were, <laughs> you were going to go down three months ago, but we are delaying. And by delaying, I mean, we're timing it perfectly. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And it, and it kind of speaks to how, um, you know, I think a lot of people will like see the brand and see, you know, the, the stuff you guys are putting out, see you in Monster Bass and there's like this, which is good, right? There's an assumption like there's 25 people and they're all out there just like cranking out baits and like a state of the art facility. And, you know, like, I can't wait to talk to the marketing director. And they're like, well, that's me. That's me. That's me. No, 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 no. Like it's, it's cool to see how, um, you know, a couple of people with a lot of passion and a lot of knowledge. I mean, obviously, right? Um, and then are are not only making it happen, but like you, you're learning as you go, right? You're you, you ever you ever buy a custom injection mold machine before, Bobby? You ever just go down and, and pick, oh, yeah. pick one up? Oh yeah, I got like twelve in my basement. <laughs> yeah, that was my twelfth. <laughs> I learned from the first eleven. <laughs> uh yeah no, it, it's definitely been a learning experience we're gonna say that much <laughs> yeah Actually, yeah man that's that's owning a business that's owning a business 101 people uh it's nothing you expected it's harder than you ever thought it could be and it will crush you but it's amazing you should definitely do it <laughs> <laughs> only while you're working two jobs for the first 10 years that's it oh, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> Got to have that at least safe. people will understand why I send those emails at 10, 10, 30, 11. I'm responding to their questions. That's why you, know, you had a whole workload during the day and you're coming home trying to make everything, you know, make all the ends meet and get everybody satisfied and it's going good. Are you trying to do a kick-ass job is what you're trying to do, right? I mean, right. <laughs> so I, I want to go back though, because you mentioned like people messaging you and, and trying to manage social media, like I, 
you know, people who are, are maybe just understanding like, oh, like this is like a handful of people doing what like, you know, a gigantic company would like pay multiple people to do, you know, you're going from, oh, I had my Facebook page where I would like tag aunt, you know, Sherry and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then now you're like, you have to totally like switch gears and be like, no, I need, this is like a customer facing tool, right? That is now free free right as much effort as i put into it marketing yeah. right and you're and you're trying to drive the engine of you know you're trying to drive sales and and awareness and and all those other things like i have to like how much what are your feelings towards social media now that you're like attached to it in like a not fun way where you're like oh this is bs <laughs> like you know or whatever like you're not just out there like doing whatever you want to do like you now have to like you have to be rabid baits yeah, I mean, my wife doesn't like it as much, um, but I've really embraced taking it over. And, you know, we've gotten a lot of great feedback. So that really helps with it. Um, you know, I had, and I'm very engaged. So for example, I don't know, I took it out of the tank. So last last night or the night before, when we had posted that little shaker worm on a Ned rig, um, there was a kid that was, he's a teenager in high school um, or maybe in college, and he asked, sent me a message or rabbit baits a message what the difference was between a ned rig and a shaky head and he wasn't sure he thought that they were pretty much the same so it was 10 o'clock 10 30 at night and i came out to the garage the light was on anyway so i came out and i rigged up a worm on a ned rig and i rigged up one on a shaky head and i dropped them both in the fish tank and let them sit and said your ned rig standing straight up your shaky head's at a 45 that's your difference. Um, and that's the nice. kind of service that you get out of when there's just three or four people that are working the company. Uh, you know, your big companies, the marketing person isn't working like that. So no, your uh, email gets buried and your shipment gets lost for 27 <laughs> days. And then they say, oops, sorry, here's a canned response. And I don't actually care. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it, it's, it's been good. It's been good. I've really kind of leaned into it and embraced it and you know, as it grows and you see the followers go and the interactions, you know, it used to be a couple likes a day. Now it's posts that are two weeks old are still getting comments and getting likes. And it's like, every time I turn to my phone, it's another hundred likes and 10 followers. And so it's, you know, kind of like raising a kid. It's fun to watch it, watch it grow. <laughs> I think it's, it's probably more like raising a Tamagotchi that evolves <laughs> the way that you really wanted it to. <laughs> With probably less poop, hopefully. <laughs> no, yeah. mostly more poop. I mean, yeah. the, the bigger you, you bigger you guys media. get, the more poop there is on social media. We all know that. Uh, that is fantastic. It's good. I'm glad you've embraced it, uh, and not in a way that it's like, oh, I have to do this. In a way that's like, you understand like how like to the story you're telling, you understand like how valuable that is, and like every time that you you have an interaction like that with somebody where they've never been responded to like one-on-one -on -one to the dude who's like out there either like making the bait or running the show. It's like that, that's probably has never happened to most people. And that is not an interaction that I think even people receive lightly either. Like that, that kid's going to be buying rabbit baits until you guys stop selling baits. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that, that is, that life. is, yeah, that is all. That is really, really cool. And it, I mean, it's also fulfilling to like know that you've done that as well, right? Like you, you know, you've done. You haven't just done a good job. Like you, you kick some ass today. Like you, you know, you You're made it, you straight up. You straight up made a customer. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, he's gonna be a better fisherman too. In general, he's gonna he's gonna know what he's doing. He's gonna be able to catch more fish. And you kind of look at the macro size of fishing. You know, he's gonna be in fishing longer when he's catching fish than if he's going out you know, a whole week and not catching anything. So certainly hope so. That would be a very difficult situation to deal with. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> We've all gotten skunked. Let's not even act like we don't get skunked. But, like, but for days on end, if I went for a whole week, <laughs> like Moses in the desert, like ah, <laughs> something is wrong. There's either no fish or I don't yeah. know what I'm doing. <laughs> Definitely no fish because I'm not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's this awesome. like sucks, Paul. Let's go to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every time. Jeff, these damn baits. 
when when a when a chirping lipless bait scares all the fish away, you tell me it's not these damn baits. It's these damn baits. Like, why why would you do it? Why would you put a smoke alarm on my, on my lure? It was the dumbest thing I've ever seen. I love it. So I'm I'm kind of like you know the trajectory of like, you know, day one. This is our idea. You know, fast forward we need to find ways to make better baits. Right. And then fast forward again. And it's like, we need to find a way to like grow the company. Right. We need to grow our influence and tell more people about what we're trying to do here. Cause like, we believe it's something that is, you know, unique and, and obviously valuable. Um, what was it like to work with monster bass? Like, was that, was that something that's like, ah, eh, we do this stuff all the time. Or was that like a, a unique experience? No, that was definitely like an eye-opening experience. The guys over at Monster Bass, you know, they helped us out a lot, like uh, giving giving us advice about, you know, how to grow our business, one. And then, two, it was also like an eye-opening experience, like, hey, we can actually do this, you know, because we're making baits before, and we're like, I don't, I don't think we can make them fast enough or make enough, and all of a sudden, we did a Monster Bass order, and we may have finished it at four o'clock in the morning but we finished it and we're like we made that many baits we, we can do this you know <laughs> that's so awesome dude pushing yeah. the limits <laughs> <laughs> dude that is that is really cool and i, I mean it's re- i think i think to get that kind of validation to be like dude monster bass and i mean you look at their social media it i mean you know what you're dealing with i mean they no pun intended they're monster right <laughs> like you know they're they're out there they're out there pushing product in, in a good way right and one it says a lot about monster bass to be like dude rabid baits is something we need to have in the box because you ain't never seen that before and it and i know this is gonna work right like that's one piece of it then the other side of it if you're rabid baits you gotta be like hell yeah dude like (laughs) dude that's a party night when you get not only a sale like that but that that amount of validation to have somebody who is is moving that much product people who are hardcore bass anglers be like i want your stuff and i want it in my box now yeah and really the second right the first order was good we were both new but the fact that you know five months later six months later they wanted us in the box again because of the response from the customer you know, that's what kind of leads you to say, we're on the right path. You know, we're, we're doing it right. We need to, you know, keep going. Hell yeah. Love it. So, totally divergent. <laughs> Which one of you guys, or is it both, or is it Bobby, is it your dad? Who's naming these things? I already know one. The St. Lawrence, I get that one. Who's naming these things? Oh, I think we've had like a a little combination of all of them um we may go back and forth quite a few times on it but <laughs> we've all got a little part in naming them <laughs> so we like to start with the easy ones like watermelon and green pumpkin black you know those are the easy yeah. ones you knock those out right away <laughs> i want to know where mud puppy came from that's my question so mud puppy all right so i don't know it's like we got little mud puppies or sculpins and you know that's where that one came from that one was pretty easy kind of um mimic that color um but uh mossy mossy blue where'd that mossy one come from yeah. <laughs> yeah. i mean it's kind of my last name but not really right it kind of makes oh sense. you took it oh you I, pirate law that's you did it i was say it. bob senior was the one that named that one and I was not going to pass on the chance to have Mossy as a paint color, right? <laughs> that's sweet. Oh, Dude, I that's love awesome. it. So then Erie is obviously Lake. Erie. Yeah, so those are like St. Lawrence, Erie, and Mud Puppy. I think those are like the first three colors we came out with. And I mean, we're up on St. Lawrence. We're making gobies. And then Erie's got gobies. I'm like, let's, let's go with this. So, uh. That's where those those first names came from. So the next uh, one that the next one that comes out, social media idea, let the people decide. <laughs> there you go. I like I mean, that. Give that the way people we don't what have to the, argue about it. That, yeah. That's what I'm saying. You just took like a whole. I don't want to figure problem. this out. <laughs> you took a whole problem off your plate. Now you could always email me. I will come up with some awesome names and and they will sell. 
but if you wanna if you wanna double duty it, you can get you can you can raffle off the name. I'll be fine with it as long as I get one later that I can name because that would be a dream. <laughs> I think we can make it happen. I did make a mistake with the social media when we were trying to unveil Monster Red. So I was using my fine Photoshop skills to try to get like a blacked out craw and post it to be like, you coming, we got a new color coming. But the way I did it, the glitter in that crayfish still shined through. So everybody, when I posted it, thought we were coming out with a black and silver craw. Oh, and no. 20 comments, they were like, oh my goodness, I can't wait for this to come out. This is awesome. <laughs> but I'm thinking like, this isn't even the one. I edited that Instagram post like three or four times to try to make it clear that this was not the color that was coming out and it didn't matter. And I finally just leaned into it. I was like, they'll find out next week, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's so your that's next that's... color that's coming out then? Yeah, the you were immediately like, Bobby, black. we need a black and silver crawl like yep. my next week. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Everybody wants it. Let's do it. Yeah. I already sold a hundred of them. We didn't, even <laughs> we didn't even come up with the color yet. <laughs> go, 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 go. <laughs> yeah, oh wow. I can't I can't wait for the color, guys. I think it's gonna be amazing. <laughs> when's that when's that one drop? Is that yeah. later this year? Yeah. Maybe twenty twenty one, I think. That's next year. Twenty twenty one? That's that's the bling bling. Yeah. We call it the Raider. The Raider. <laughs> Okay, you can name the baits. Fine, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So I have you guys tried these under the ice yet? Yes, the ice yeah. definitely. All right, so uh, not far from Champ well Champlain too, but uh, we got Lake George, which has some big lake trout, and they are really aggressive. Um, so the darter. I rigged that on like a VMC hook. It's got like a 60 degree eyelet and that thing on, on that jig head swims through the water like nothing else. Um, we're going to have to put this video on like our YouTube or something, but we were on Lake Champlain and uh, we caught a giant hole in the ice and we we're sight fishing a lake trout with that same little, the ghost darter and uh, the ghost, little yeah. jig head and like 15 feet of water and you can watch the, the darter swim around these fish are chasing it in the hole and we're catching these giant lake trout through the ice and you see the whole thing happen it, it's, it's crazy this oh, is not I a not video yet video. what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> it th does this not exist in the public space is that what you're saying it's it, on your heart it's out there on youtube so i think i uploaded okay. it like two years ago it's out there somewhere <laughs> no 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 repost i, I feel like we the, the, the journey you guys have traveled on so far, you're at a point where you could probably do some advanced editing here and make this thing look like really good. <laughs> Looking so at let's... you, Josh, and don't black it out. <laughs> <laughs> that falls under ad administrator. That's administrator <laughs> for sure. So, I think we'll wait till we get a little closer to winter before we start posting videos of ice fishing. <laughs> I it now. The type train, <laughs> let it roll, man. <laughs> You have a bunch of dudes in the UP like, I need to buy 30 of these. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's all a question of when you want your orders fulfilled. Do you want them to order now or later? <laughs> it's up to you. You know, they're all, all the northerners up here, we're already thinking like, when does that ice come back? Yeah. <laughs> On those really hot days when you're just like melting in the sun, it's like, man, ice fishing is going to be pretty sweet this year. <laughs> Yeah, then you go back and watch the video of you ice fishing with like 13 icicles off your mustache. Yeah. Like, nah, maybe June's pretty dope. <laughs> then, you, then you get on, where are we on? We're on Higgins. We're at 170 mile an hour hurricane winds blasting icicles in your face. Like, <laughs> Dude, my beer cans were going like down the ice before they were even empty. It was like, yep. oh, okay, I was done with that. Sure, whatever. Just <laughs> running after it, man. That was great. <laughs> All right, so so... What we've said is they do work in the ice. They work really well. Uh, generally, like, I, I guess if people are just fishing through the ice for, you know, panfish, right? What would you do with some of these rigs? Because they look pretty big. So I'm just saying for, like, my, my ice people up here just popping gillies, if you're going to sell something to them, what do you think you would do? Like, how would you adjust that rig? I mean, we definitely for panfish, like, if you, like, cut the little tiniest piece that shaker warm off and put it on just think of that dig. yes and 
we may be working on a little something. <laughs> Forget about that. Jeff, this is why you have to read the show notes. I was on this amazing trip. Like, I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> tell me about the ice. And I was like, wait, is something going to come out next? That was literally what I was doing here. You made it happen <laughs> organically. <laughs> so you're welcome. Whatever. <laughs> Don't give any trade secrets. What can you tell us? Because What's your I, How do you this, make them? Yeah. <laughs> How much are your molds? Because <laughs> I'm not gonna go custom mold them. <laughs> so what are like one of my questions? The next question that was going to be fired at you was like, what's coming up next? Because you guys have, you know, done a really nice job um, pushing this really cool, these really cool finesse rigs. Some of the just classics, right? Things that people use uh, and, and can be rigged on just like basically any you know finesse setup that you got. But, but what's coming next though? That you could share. <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> sure, Josh. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously, holistically, we've got a whole, you know, macro. We've got an entire business plan. We, you know, we have thought about saltwater baits. We've thought about hand baits. Um, you know, we're looking to make a complete line of soft plastics. So, if there's something that you like to do, uh, you know, one of our, you know, one of our main weaknesses I would say as far as what we're lacking is something to really wind um, and something that you can you know crank with on a spinner bait or a trailer of some sort um, a lot of people really like the the Ned bait so kind of something that's a little more of a specific Ned style bait for that Ned rig um, is also coming along with the, the ice fishing um, so those are kind of the you know three that are probably in the nearest future to, to coming to you on the shelves um, would be some sort of Ned rig. It's, it's gonna, it's not just a shorter worm. So don't think that we just, you know, cut the molds in half and are giving you a shorter shake of worm. It is a different specific. I'm not mad about it. <laughs> Business 101, what are we talking about? Um, Josh, don't say these be, things. <laughs> and I'm not gonna give it away, but the, the Ned bait that we are working on has a, you know, different kind of twist than our, our other bait. So it's something that will really catch your eye. Um, that's the same, but different. Jeff is already pre-ordering. You've got three <laughs> emails. <laughs> They're in your give inbox. Me, give right me a second. Now. I'll go put that on the website so you can order if you want to pre-order. <laughs> <laughs> Send me the secret webpage. It's in Black Raider or something. <laughs> the, Black, the Black Raider. <laughs> You're not allowed to name the base. <laughs> we already said this. Josh names the base, not you. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. I love that. I like that. I mean, obviously, you guys have a lot of experience. I mean, anybody that's observant enough to be like, I'm going to make my own bait is someone that's gotten like enough experience to have a perspective to even like for that thought to pop into their mind, right? Because you're not just thinking like, what else can I throw? You're like, okay, what would work perfectly in this scenario? And you're like drawing on a lot of experience, like make that to make that call. Um, you know, it's really cool to see that you have that background and that experience and, and kind of like the fishing knowledge, right? And then on top of it, industrious enough to be like, no, we're going to make a shit ton of these, right? And we're going to, you know, we want to, we want to give the people what they want. Um, even if they don't know that they want this yet, <laughs> it's, <laughs> but it's, we want it, but there's a lot, I think it's really cool though, too, um, that you have this like dichotomy of like, you know, being in the area that you've been fishing in. Um, we feel it. I feel like in Michigan a lot where like, other than like saltwater species, we get a little bit of everything. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the knowledge base is actually pretty broad. Like, cause a lot of folks, like if you're in Florida and you were making, you know, finesse fly type, you know, f rigs like this, pro you, pro you may not ever get to make an ice fishing rigs. Right. You may look at Northland and be like, I'm not going to compete with that. <laughs> right. Like I'm not even going to bother. What's the point? Like they may not even get to that point. Cause you're probably not thinking about it. Um, and you're probably not chainsawing giant holes in the ice and, and trying to, trying to get trout out of them either. Um, so I just think that's, I mean, maybe I'm biased cause again, Michigan, but like, I just think that's a really, I just think that's a really cool knowledge base to have, you know, enough to know, like, we're going to slay bass with these for sure. But then also be like, 
And maybe we could put these uh, through the hard water, too. Like, I love that. I just think that's so cool, man. Because that's what I would do, i am be honest with you. The whole time I was like, man, if I just had a smaller one of these, <laughs> I would, these would be down every single hole that I dig. Is your, your second million dollar idea that rabbit baits stole. <laughs> yeah. So you're saying it's already been thought of. <laughs> dang it, Bobby and Josh. They keep taking my dang ideas that I never told them about after I've never met them ever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I, love it. I think that's just like a really cool. I think it, you guys have a really neat perspective and I uh, love the, love the trajectory you guys on, which is why we reached out in the first place. Cause like, dude, I mean, like we told it earlier, like I'm over here, trying to do the the homemade school art version and like i can already get it like, sent to my house like <laughs> go to michael's and get some pipe cleaners and time together <laughs> shut up that's exactly what i did why would you make fun of my thing <laughs> it's straight up pipe cleaners he, he's all like oh this is just shut so up, no, not. <laughs> uh, wow. no, super awesome um what like tell us you know i mean obviously we know you can find us. We we know you can uh, be found on Instagram. Where else can people find you? Where should we look for you? Um, give us the give us the stick, man. Yeah, absolutely. Instagram. We have a Facebook page. Uh, I am working on creating more content for our YouTube page to really give people you know a library of our baits underwater. So you can go there and watch our one video for now. But between now and iCast, uh, July 13th, I think it starts. I'll have uploaded a complete library of baits in the water with different rigs. Um, and then you can check us out on our website. If you just go to our website on our homepage, there is a video that kind of rolls with the fish tank with each bait in there. So you can check them out underwater um, along with our, our gear. Um, hashtag rabid baits. You got to go follow that and us. Uh, you'll get a lot of great content from our pro staff people or a lot of people that get monster bass boxes. Um, you know, they're posting a lot of great content. You know, you guys have some of the best of your unboxing. Um, so, you know, we're we're getting around. It's going to be hard to not see rabid baits pretty soon. So good. Awesome. Love it, guys. Yeah, that's it for us, guys. All right. Let's wrap this episode. Uh, this episode. Let's uh, let's wrap this episode up. Let's wrap this episode up. Uh, it's been a long day, man. I'm still burned out from the sun. <laughs> Still got a couple days left of your Father's Day week of fishing too. Dude, there's still tomorrow, and then like if I sneak off Saturday, Mount Pleasant has like no bodies of water, but I'll I'll drive 30, 45 <laughs> an hour. <laughs> we'll figure Bye, it out. Bye, kids. <laughs> Later, nerds. <laughs> Let's go. You know I'm bringing a rod. We're gonna figure it out. Uh, anyways, thanks for listening, guys. As always, if you like the episode, go ahead and hit subscribe. Drop us a five-star review and throw us a comment. Let us know things you want us to talk about in the future, anything we can do to improve this show. And, of course, you can follow us Instagram and Facebook at Burley Fishing or check out the YouTube channel Burley Fishing. And we'll be featuring a Rabid Baits uh, kind of an unboxing review slash uh, fishing trip that I went on. And as soon as Paul gets his baits from me somehow <laughs> he'll be fishing with them as well and hopefully catches a whole bunch of fish so hopefully we can get you know a little more in depth with uh using rabid baits which i think are a fantastic soft plastic alternative that you guys should go check out right now uh other than that guys we'll catch you out on the water <laughs>